you dance in this place. Everybody, 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 everybody. For the love of a man. De la Yesu Domenye.
Come on, clap your hands on it. Come on. I tried it. I tried it. morning and praise the Lord. We bring you Calvary greetings once again from the head office of the Global Evangelical Church. We are thankful to God that he has taken us through the fourth month and he has ushered us into the fifth month in the year 20. 20. And today is the very first Sunday. We should be preparing for communion service on a day like this, uh, but it's not going to be very possible. We pray that the Lord himself, in his own special way, will continue to commune with us. We have as our theme today, give to others. Give to others. That is what we have in our global evangelical church lectionary, which we believe is being preached on or taught on 
throughout the world. Global Evangelical Church. We have three Bible readings, but we shall look at only two for the sake of time. And the two are Acts chapter 4, 32 to 37, and Luke chapter 6, 27 to 36. So we will pick the texts in English only and do the translation as we move along. Acts chapter 4, 32 to 37. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was powerfully at work in them all, that there were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. Amen. Amen. The second reading is from Luke chapter 6, 27 to 36. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on the cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you. Give to everyone who asks you. No, and if anyone yes. takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great. And you will be children of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Amen. Amen. Shall we pray? Eternal God, we thank you for this day that you have made for us to rejoice and be glad in it. Mm. Thank you that you have taken us through four months and you have ushered us into the fifth month. A prayer, Lord, this morning is, come, speak to us yes, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Once again, the theme chosen for us is, give to others. Now, the, the striking thing about the theme and the readings that we have done is that the portion of scripture from Acts deals exclusively with believers, people of the same mind, people of the same heart, giving unto their own, doing good unto their own, to the admiration of the outside world. 
nous va venir le maunya ya mi o mi khla ma ay enye ba nu khla gba to mi khla la do wa pa agba la ma of ponu cho amayo fa ji pla ta ma zu le de ka ji ko se to yo pe pe mu de wo nu e wo hu anu nam wo nu e wa le gba gba ba o va zu nu yi agodo to ka ta fa nku atro de wo le ma o ka fun de ta now there is nothing wrong about that because paul in his letter to the galatians even stress and i read Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. In contrast, however, is the second reading where Jesus Christ admonishes us to step out and take care of others including our enemies ke apa vele ya yesu christo lanu klo ma mi be manya mia o de de mia no vi o ma yo pa su o de ka klo mi ko mia wo nwi na o ka bo ho ma yo nya mia pa ka to ha mia wo nwi na o beloved i dare say that we have made for ourselves more enemies in the church today than even the number of enemies we have out there in the world. Even though Jesus Christ may not or might not have that kind of thinking for telling us to give to our enemies. Hallelujah. Amen. Now give to others. What are we supposed to give? Although the context here concerns the giving of material things the application can be extended to all areas of Christian giving. As Christians, we can go beyond giving material things, giving money, giving foodstuff, giving tangible things, to giving a lot more like our time. We can give our talent, we can give our treasure. We can give love to people. We can give encouragement. We can give forgiveness to people. And other forms of support that people need. They all form part and parcel of giving. I know it will not surprise you when we state that there are people who have a lot of material things but they need other things. So you may not have money or material things, but you have something. The example of Peter and John when they were ministering, the Bible says there was this beggar always at the gate called Beautiful who always wanted material things from people. But when Peter and John and his friends got there, this beggar was in high expectation that he was going to get something from them. But what did Peter say? Silver and gold that you may be expecting, we do not have any. But what we have, we give unto you. And what they gave to him rather enable him to do for himself and others what he could not have done hitherto. Beloved, you do not need to have everything in the world to show true care and support to friends and people around you. 
Kofi, Natura Lemon and Noviulu, Aduna de Pedamore and Amade. You always have something to give. Sometimes all we have to do is to be there for people. Ada Yulia, a mother born no no way, Mamma Clam, mother, Queen, and Nova Vito, is to speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. I know you burn a cunya, a coffin, a mayoka, is to stand in for those who do not have any strength to defend themselves. Yeah, mayoka, who take them alone, who walk better, who do you want, yak better, who hallelujah, amen. Now give to others. Who are these others? Now, I'm not going to pretend to know those others, though I can state that there are people around us we are very familiar with who are not ourselves. Of course, when the Bible says give to others, it means go beyond yourself. Now, Philippians chapter 2 verse 4 says, Not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of the Others. So the others include your friends, your loved ones, family members, the rich, the poor, the widows, orphans, and so forth and so on that we think that we know. But but Jesus Christ specifically gave us a list of the others. In the second reading. And I want to give you the list of Jesus' others. These others your enemies. Those who hate you. Those who curse you. Those who mistreat you. Everyone who asks you. And the last in Jesus' list is those who cannot pay you back. And he made that clearer in Luke 14, 13 and 14 where he says, but when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the cripple, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want to believe that we have all these classes of people in the church. In your congregation, in your community, in your locality, in your nation. Hallelujah. Amen. The emphasis of Jesus, however, I want to pin it down to three classes. One, people who could not give you back. Two, mm -hmm. the needy. And three, the enemies. Nu mayo kata yesu agula majo ma maure ha chuchu atome agbato nya amayo na na nuwa umagata mula wunaga amaha chuchu avelia wa wonya eh 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 the need of eh eh yato eh Hallelujah. Amen. So I attempted looking at the word enemy. We've been hearing, I've been hearing, I've been using it, but for a very long time I haven't taken time to look at who really an enemy is, what the meaning of enemy is. So this morning, let me tell you what I have found out. A person who is actively opposed or hostile to someone or something is referred to as an enemy. 
Ala mabe anyagbe amapaka to kato ya mazane zigere ha nyama rei jijare nyama ganonyi alankuda gomada dangu chito chito kwa kakai manonyi ba malankuda ngwa ni madeje senya amade hike achitre da amade nguti la moada nwaro la guada ma anyama pafuto now the latin word inimicus meaning hostile unfriendly is the root of enemy so the word Amicus is the root of friend. Then when you add the prefix in or not, then you get not a friend. Hallelujah. Amen. And the context within which Jesus Christ was speaking, the Jews despised the Romans because they oppressed God's people. But Jesus told the people to love these enemies. And, and such words turn many people away from Jesus Christ. When he tells them, love your enemies, do good to those who despitefully mm. persecute you, these words of admonition to them always turn people away from Jesus. But Jesus Christ was not talking about having affection for your enemies, brothers and sisters. Jesus was talking about the act of the will. Loving our enemies is acting in their best interest. We can pray for them and we can think of ways to help them. But you cannot, in quotation, fall in love. Mm. You cannot fall in love with your enemy. That, that one takes conscious effort to do. Beloved, love means action. And I humbly plead with you to listen to me. You see, you can give to somebody without necessarily loving them, mm. but you cannot love somebody without giving to them. Last week we read about Luke chapter 18 when this wicked judge denied this widow help. But the wicked judge later said, well, I do not fear man, neither do I fear God. But when I look at the persistence of this woman, there is the need for me to do something, to give her justice. That tells you that the wicked judge didn't have any love for this woman. But for one reason or the other, he was compelled to give to her. Again, look at the lunatics that line the streets. When they pester you and you give to them, you wouldn't say because you have fallen in love with them, that is why you have given them. You have given them because probably they were pestering you, they were worrying you. That was why you gave them. But you cannot claim to love someone and not give them. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 
de wo lo nyonu a ite wo na nu ero mo lo ga ke a nu wo na kra fo de da we ba wo anana ni ta fla chi arabato yo le moji e da mi de nu no nu bia ma mi amanya ba lo lo yi ke na lo wa ita ina cho no na oro ke bo wa de wo yi a fu de na ma yi de mu le na gba wo chu gba ita ga ke ma le bo bo ba na ba ye lo ma da fo ma te hu adana na ke ana hu lo lo to ma o that is the point we are driving e ya nyanya yi gbon miele If you claim you love God, I therefore find it difficult while we should find it so difficult to give to God, to give to God's people, to give to people created by God, to give to do God's work. We claim to love him, but we are unable to give. Mie gbaba mie elo mawu ka ke ba mie nanu mawu amayo mawu wa amayo mawu yo amayo mawu de pa nu mo mie nanu wa wo wo sesena na mi enya ya goma sese atena jinya la gbo nya matan sa goma tututu ba amade na ba elo mawu ka ke mawu ya ba elo wa mate nwa nanu mawu well we shall progress and possibly the bible will give us some of the remedies some of the answers one way to put love to work is to take the initiative in meeting specific needs. Amoyi moyo ji na to ba na atawo adelo lo afi aro na no ma de ayenya ba na do click ta o do motore kenya ma na do click ta ba ya o do ma fa hia hia da ngutini. And from what we have read this is easy to do with people who love us, people whom we trust, but loving our enemies, loving those who dislike us, loving those who hurt us. It's very difficult. Nu mi akle fa nya no anu ya wo ala bobu ebe na wala mayu na ji anya na mayu na lo mayu pa nu George na odume ga keba na wila wo kato odume amade yipa nu manyo nu na wene ya asese alegbegbe. They also constitute the others. Abu ama ya wo awo ho la mabubu yo gbo mmiele. Love means doing this even to those who dislike us and plan to hurt us. Aye ama lo lo afia ba mi ada fo alegbegbe ba ama yo ala fo mi ama yo do pe ta ba ye wo fo mi ha mi a wo nwi na wo. The Bible says while we were yet sinners while we were sinning with impunity Jesus Christ died for us. Bible gbo ba e mi ganye nu fo wo la wo nu fo wo de ka ma cho le mato ya Christo va ku de mi Beloved Jesus loved the whole world even though the world was in rebellion against God. And he asks us to follow his example by loving our enemies. Believers are to love all men even enemies. That is where I I am once again stressing that we have made ourselves even more enemies in the church than the people we claim who do not know Christ being our enemies. So suma tema la gbe tema nya ajibe la hama yo ma miela mi odo futo na mi aloku go ha cho wo ba cho wo ma yo la godo mi abubu nya mi apa futo. And they are to to be respected and honored. Aye mi apa futo ya la mi ada bubu wo ngu adoga o. Every human being has something that is commendable about them. No view am agbato de si adade. Na na kokoko lenwu eje na kafu kafu. Even if it is nothing at all, but the fact that he is a human being, a fellow human being with a soul to be reached for Jesus Christ, there is the need for us to love them. Na nya ba na kemala mangwa ma azu ama madinu lanku ma ayo nyam ike mawowo luvo lama ike na tenwa gbo mawunya na wa trouble mawu boko ha afia ba ma ya jene lolo you know loving one's enemies is against human nature it's against it's against our our, our nature la magbato fa jojo manude ama fa keto manyalo now the behavior of human nature is to react to hate to strike back and even to wish you dead nu ike kula megba to pa jojo manu nya ba na tu na manya ha ma tu no na we na mama wo da nu no na hia na ku ha na yifa at best human nature treats enemies with coldness and and they give you distance na ma ba okay ya ma wo ba ke ye wo fo da nu na ye nya ba wo fo sa na ma a nga nku afu ya ba ma pomo na maliga ke a wo ba ma li ona when i was looking at things to give beyond material tangible things I said we need to give 
forgiveness also to people. You know, many people are reluctant to show mercy because they don't really understand the difference between trust and forgiveness. They don't know the difference between trust and forgiveness. Beloved, forgiveness is letting go of the past. But trust has to do with the future behavior of the person. Forgiveness must be immediate, right here, now. Anytime the person offends, forgive them immediately. Whether, whether the person asks for it or not. However, trust must be rebuilt over time. Trust requires time and a track record. You know, if, if, if someone hates you repeatedly, you are commanded to forgive them as many times that they hurt you. But you are not expected to trust them immediately. And you are not expected to continue allowing them to hurt you. They must prove that they have changed over time. Praise the name Hallelujah. of the Lord. So let's forgive. I was telling a senior pastor that the problem some of us have is when we look up to those situations where it becomes very difficult for us not to forgive. We forgive. But, but to hold certain classes of people in high esteem again, it, it's, it's quite worrisome. But the Bible says, forgive, and we shall forgive. But to build trust, the person must show proof. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, our next point is giving to others means sharing your life with them. And this is demonstrated by the early church in our first reading. Life is meant to be shared. And it is God's intention for us to experience life together, to live together in harmony, to live together in peace, and the Bible calls this shared experience fellowship. And this kind of fellowship includes unselfish loving. Honest sharing. Practical serving. Sacrificial giving. And sympathetic comforting. All these were practically demonstrated by the early church in the first reading. Beloved, the early church was able to share possessions and property as a result of the unity brought by the Holy Spirit that was working in the believers' lives and was working through the believers' lives. Hallelujah. Amen. 
So the sharing was voluntary. They didn't, they did not compel anybody. Even though need was demonstrated and they wanted to meet those needs, nobody was forced. And and it did not also involve all private property, but only as much as was needed. For somebody to say, oh, it's written in the Bible. We saw it in the book of Acts that they sold everything they had No. They didn't sell all their houses, all their cars, all the land and everything. They sold only certain things, brought it to meet the needs of others. Firstly, that there were no needy persons amongst them. For from time to time, those who own land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. My brothers and sisters, the life of the early church and believers was most unusual. And I will explain. A far cry from the way we live today. There was complete and total oneness. There was unity, there was harmony, there was love, one accord. And remember, there were multitudes, thousands of believers at this time. Because if you read Acts chapter 2 verse 41, the Bible says, Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. And Meaning, before even getting to chapter 4, the number would have increased. So the reason I said the life of these believers was most unusual is this. How in the world can a body of people achieve one heart and one mind? And that is what we need today. To be able to give to others freely. They give their heart and mind to Jesus' lordship and mission. They surrendered themselves totally to the lordship of Jesus Christ. To his life and to his will. His purpose and his mission. Christ became their will. Christ became their purpose. Christ became their mission. Christ became their all in all. Because, and because of this single quality in the early church, there was no lack among the people. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, we need to be one. Thankfully, Jesus even prayed for us before he left. That all of us will become one. The Bible says that all of them may be one. 
Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent them. Yes, we do, but I grab a full number one, no deca, a balake and a lamania, a yam a lamona, but a common a jessiba way domda. Now, the secret is this. Turn with me to the book of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. The first five verses. And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches in the midst of a very severe trial, a very severe trial, my emphasis. Their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability entirely on their own, meaning nobody forced them, entirely on their own. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. And they exceeded our expectation. Now this is the secret. They give themselves first of all to the Lord. And then by the will of God also to us. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, during Paul's third missionary journey. The Bible says he had collected money for the in impoverished believers in Jerusalem. The churches in Macedonia, like Philippi, Thessalonica, Berea, had given money, even though they were themselves poor, and they had given more than Paul expected. This was sacrificial giving. Because they were poor themselves, but they wanted to help. Now, brothers and sisters, Global Evangelical Church and all other believers out there, let us take note of a few things this morning. Talking about giving to others. According to the reading, these people give out of one their dedication to Christ. The Bible says they give themselves first unto the Lord. Before even they started giving money, before they started rendering any kind or any form of service, before even they give themselves to their apostles, my brothers and my sisters, my concern is there is nobody on this planet earth who can give himself, his entire being, to the saving grace and knowledge of Jesus. You have given yourself to Christ and you will withhold anything that belongs to you from Christ, it is not possible. No fear, no tone. We enjoy, but million kuru la fear. Any bear, ama yawa. Upa nuna na ya adu chuudu kichocho. Ena mau ma. Ela baby black brother. U chuudu kio na mau agban. Aye majima na sanya ya nyi ba. Leka kema malabo buba amada. Na chui fag be kata ake Christo. A chui amati kata ane Christo voa. Aga henana aruni kala si madam magbe. To Christo Bo. Then it means your giving of yourself to the Lord is not total, is not complete. The Bible here says that they first gave themselves mm. to the Lord, mm. and the Lord then enabled them to give, and they were able to give beyond their ability. Incredible. Mm. Mm. Colleague ministers of the gospel, this must be our main task. To ensure that people really give themselves first unto the Lord. Otherwise, the noise we make, 
-hmm. All the other teachings we do may not give us any desired result. But, but when people give themselves mm. totally, wholly, mm. completely, mm. unconditionally to the Lord, mm. there is absolutely nothing about themselves that they cannot give unto God and unto the people of God. This is the secret of giving. And it also applies to all other successes that you chalk in your Christian service. May somebody be prepared this morning to surrender themselves to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. They also give out of love for fellow believers. Because Paul needed to visit the others who were impoverished, who didn't have anything. He wanted to visit them. He wanted help extended to them. So these poor people gave so willingly and they gave out of love for fellow believers. That's why the underlying factor there is love. They give out of dedication to Christ, they give out of love for fellow believers, and they also give out of the joy of helping those in need. The joy the happiness, the excitement Amen. of helping somebody, Amen. of meeting a need in somebody's Amen. life. Amen. As well as the fact that it was simply the good and the right thing to do. Yes, to some people, giving to others is both a gift and a calling. Even though giving in general is very difficult. But when you, when, when you see the way other people give, even in this church, Global Evangelical Church, but beloved, as we, we, we gravitate towards the end of our presentation this morning, now when I say to the end, doesn't mean in five minutes I'm going to close. No. You, 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 you need to understand something. There must be genuineness in the church. This is the kind of quality we see in the first church. And Christ reiterated that in the second reading. Because in real fellowship where Christ is at the center of human life, people experience what is authentic, what is genuine. Yes, they share their hearts. They, re they, they reveal their feelings. They confess their failures. They, they, they disclose their doubts. They admit their fears. And they acknowledge their weaknesses. And after all these, they seek help. 
Aye, wo da je si o pe gbojo gbojo o be yo ni gbojo gbojo to o aye wo ji apepede mu le gbojo gbojo beloved real fellowship happens when people become honest about who they are nanya ba ama o le de ko nya tepo to mu na wo do ku ama yi ton gbe wo nya wo dem le gbogbo mu re afi ma afi ha bobo a atehu atuna atuna ronwe beloved church leaders are getting extremely worried about about the way people people are not genuine these days Beloved, do you know how difficult it is to go and ask? Even though you are in need, it is difficult to go to somebody and say, Can you give me 10 Ghana CDs? Oh, can you can you give me a thousand? I'll pay back after. Do you know how difficult it is and how embarrassing after all? Mm, after mm, you have mm, gone to mm. ask, the person tells you, oh, you have come rather too late. You know, it, it's so embarrassing. Mm. That is why we need genuineness in our congregations. No, you are not like you. Say, say. But I don't know how to do it. I do it. I don't it. We only grow by taking risks. And the most difficult risk of all is to be honest with yourself and be honest with other people. There are enemies we have created in the church today for ourselves. Some come as a result of being honest with other people. People will hate you when you are honest with them. So being being authentic is the exact opposite of what we find in some churches, if not in all churches today. Oh, forgive me, please. Hallelujah. The Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. You must first qualify to be weak before you can call for strength. So if you keep, if you keep pretending you cannot be helped, don't worry, I'm keeping social distancing, <laughs> right? The, 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 the danger here is that people pretend, even if they are sick, if, even if they need it, they cannot ask because, with due respect, some leadership, some leaders in the church, and even congregation members, what their right hand will do the left hand will showcase it. Meanwhile, the Bible says, do not, do not mm. do your good deeds in secret. And you know, they do it in such a tricky manner that some disguise it mm. in prayer forms, as prayer points. They are praying for him. Listen to me, brothers. I'm telling you real life situations. 
They go and tell them, oh, let's pray for brother so-so and so. Let's pray for sister so-so and so. In fact, she's so much in this need. The other time, I had to go there, give him this, give him that, give him the other thing before they are able to survive. Let's pray for them. The good reason is what the person is giving. But the real reason is for you to know that, but for him, he wouldn't have gotten anything to eat. But for him, he wouldn't have gotten any clothes. He wouldn't have gotten any money. Beloved, let's shelve good reasons and look up to the realities and say that which is right. Leaders and congregation members alike. So people can approach us. They know when they come and ask, you are not going to broadcast it. Mm. People are dying quietly. They are dying secretly. Mm. They are hurting because we cannot go by the principles of the Bible to keep our mouth shut on what we do to and for other people. <laughs> Globa <laughs> But I want to also encourage and assure you that there are more trustworthy people out there. People that you can trust. People you can call upon. There are people who, who, who come, they, they, do, they do great things. They give. They continue to give. But they even tell you, please, I don't want anybody to know that I brought this. I gave this. I donated this. Our time is up, so let's conclude. Timing is also of essence when you want to give to others. That is on the note on which we are concluding this morning. Acts chapter 4, 34 says that there were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who own land or houses sold them, brought them money from the sales. Beloved, sometimes giving to others can be time bound. Because you do not know how long you will have the opportunity. You have only a certain amount of time to do that. And I say this for three reasons. Number one, people grow out of need. Exactly. Today, if you bring me school sandals, you bring me school uniform, you bring me shito and gari, you may be doing a yeoman's job, but I may not need those things now. You should have done them some 35, 40 years ago. So people grow out of need. Children grow. The future. Today at least I have a little financial muscle to be able to buy my, my slippers. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Number two. People 
Before circumstances change, they will never remain like that forever. Because the COVID-19 situation, circumstance, environment which we find ourselves now, you need to do good to somebody. If COVID-19 is over and you extend a kind of help to some people, it is coming rather too late. But COVID-19 so people's circumstances change. So if you want really to give to others, look at the timing. And three, which is the last one, people die. So if the person is dead and you are not rushing there, what are you going to do? Nothing to eat, nobody to console them. You were not there, you heard about the death, then you are on your way. What are you, are you going to resurrect the person? Our theme today is give to others. And and we are saying to conclude that giving is also time bound. Jesus made a defining statement in Mark chapter 14 verse 7 when he says, The poor you will always have with you and you can help them anytime you want, but you will not Always have me. Yesu Christu gbonye ya makofa le be ahia to le mi adoma no geda ga ke enye ya nya ma no nyi pri mi da o na Even though we cannot lay claim to Jesus' statement being ours no but by extension there are people you may not see always. There are people who may die tomorrow. Then you say ah the last time I thought about Tito. I wanted to go and visit. I wanted to go and give him some money. But I thought it was not enough. My brother, if it is one Pesawa, go and send it. That one Pesawa may mean one million to that person at that particular time. But from those to whom it is due, when it is in your power to act, do not say to your neighbor, come back tomorrow and I will give it to you when you, you already have it with you. As we prepare to pray, Open your Bible with me to this text. Second Corinthians chapter 9. 11 to 13. For me to encourage you using God's word that when you give to others, two things happen to you yourself. Second Corinthians 9. 11 to 13. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Number one, this service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of Thanks to God. Number two, because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen Dr. and watch as we pray. Anytime you give, 
let me not say any time. I don't know if it had happened to you before. You give to a needy person. For instance, someone knocks on your door, brings a fat envelope, and says, Pastor, God spoke to me to come and deliver this to you. And at that time, you might have been in a serious need. Immediately, you get the envelope. Sometimes, for me, not for anybody, I don't know about you. For me, the first thing I'll say is, oh God. Meanwhile, it is not God who is standing right in front of me. Now, when he is gone, you say, oh, what a God. Oh God. Oh my God. Long before you even mention the name of the person who brought the item. Now, the implication is this. As you keep thanking God for what somebody else has done for you, God takes the glory and he keeps pouring upon the source. God will give to the source and the source will extend the hand to somebody and the person will give glory to God Amen. and God will keep blessing you Amen. as you give. But people give glory to God. Mm. I don't know if you have experienced it. Ow! Maxwell. Mau. Ow! Mau lololo. Ow! Mau. Ow! Nyeme nyabe makonu dukbe hao. Ow! Mau. Vomenye mau ye konu oveo. Ameji oto. Allow God to use you. Amen. To be an extension of support to somebody. Amen. And he will continue to bless you. Because he knows that he takes glory from what you do for him. Amen. The mother Mau, Naira, Ato, Amadeji, Aro, Ato, Ju, Aira, Naira, Made, Eva, Nua, Na, the mother Nuna, Naira, Na, the Mau, Naira, Ma, Aira, O, Ben, Agana, Mabu, Bu, O, Abala, Iko, Ojo, Na, Ben, Mada, Ben, Nua, Ko, Eyo, Ko, Nua, Na, Wa, Afala, Ge, Iya, De, Ike, Nua, Iya, O, Pa, Nua, Terechi, O, Ei, Na, Ko, Nua, Do, I, Ko, Jo, Ko, Nua, Ve, Mabu, Gaba, Ko, Jo, Ba, Ah, O, Mau, Iya, Owa, Ayo, Ojo, Owa, Ba, O, Mau, Ganyolo. Yahoo, when I ulo, O Mawala Bebo Domanuea, Aina la Paya Dama, Mawa to drop a yada mamaji, and my kunove ato agano jim regi, or a gadia nama bubu, and more fact better than a mawanaga who are boni, than the mau labo one on me, but I'm an anunamicata. So you will always be resourced. And then you will allow a kumadilo at Bamako to give to others. Mau and Nuban and because your giving, a labo nunana. Allows God to receive glory. Somebody is praising God. Beloved, shall we pray? The theme is give to others. You can only give when you first have given your entire life to Jesus Christ. You can never do that if Christ is not at the center of your life. So, Follow me this morning if you really want to surrender your life to Christ. Lord Jesus, I have heard your word. I know I'm a sinner. I invite you into my life. Forgive me my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. And my personal Savior. Thank you for saving me. Amen. 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 Pray for us.